It's OK Football's Champ Chat, where we go through every single game from Friday and Saturday's game week in the championship. It's just another week in the greatest league in world football, in my opinion. And with me, I'm joined by my regular co-host, Beefy. We got, you'll recognize him, direct your abuse that way. It's my <laughs> co-host from the championship game week prediction videos, Mark Ryman. And I've also got, we got Tyler from T-Boys TV. If you watch Loosen Content, you'll recognize him. Uh, how are we all doing, chaps? Ooh, it was yeah. one of those weeks in the championship, wasn't it? It was all a bit meh. We had two good games, Coventry, Luton and Plymouth. But that was it. Everything else was just a nil-nil board draw. That's yeah. the way, isn't it? A few good shots to talk about, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Not the most inspiring not the, week not, of not um, football. No. Uh, but double bottling, you know, two, two teams bottling double a bottling. big lead. <laughs> so that's bottling. nice. That phrase, yeah, good, yeah, exactly. Well, I've heard a double bubble, I haven't heard a double bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I've written just Plymouth Preston, my notes just say mayhem. <laughs> 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 oh, it's crazy. Well, let's uh, let, let's jump in. As this is recorded on a Sunday, we can't discuss Norwich versus Millsborough. Who wants to get Mystic Meg on this and uh, uh, try and predict it. it depends who finishes their chances, right? Yeah, Middlesbrough can't really finish their chances. No, and Norwich have got Sergeant. I just think he's due a couple of goals now. I think Norwich for that one. I find it hard to see past Norwich against most opponents. Um, Borough have picked up a little bit, um, but even so, yeah, their attack is too strong for most teams in the league. I'm going to go Norwich as well. Now, Tyler, we're going to see a Borough win, aren't we now? No, no I don't <laughs> think so. I think, you know, you look at Norwich, 20 unbeaten at home. <coughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's Delia like Smith cooking up something impressive there. Like, like we say, Sargent's got a good goal scoring record. You know, I, I can't see anything other than a, a Norwich win, to be honest. And Middlesbrough, you never really know what you're going to get with them. They're quite inconsistent, I feel. And again, they're, I feel like this with a lot of sides in the championship, but I feel their home form is, is where they're better. I just think away, going to Norwich with the form they're on, it, it will end at some point, but I don't, I don't think it's, you know, today. So. I'll say Norwich win, and um, they're just clinical and take their chances. Yeah, fair play. Uh, I, was like, I back Norwich as well. Um, but we were feasted on Friday night oh, yeah, to a spectacular game. It was Portsmouth 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2, and it was kicked off in style. Great performance coming from behind, turning the game on its head in the second half. Really even game, but Michael Smith's absolute banger. Screecher, the wasn't it? difference Fantastic. in that game. A lot of swaz. <coughs> yeah, so much swaz on that ball. Yep. The the one thing I wondered is whether the Windass equaliser was offside or not. Mm. I, I think it was. probably was. No VAR, it? though. Uh, no, well, no, no VAR, but yeah. it, it turned the game on its head. It changed everything. And I think the question is whether he was behind the ball or not. And if you look at it from the two angles that were available, mm. it's a different answer each time. Yeah, one yeah. I'd said no and one I'd say yes. So... Um, it's the, one of the joys of the championship over the Premier League, isn't it? That we have that uncertainty still, which gives us something to talk about. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I agree. I think we were watching it. We were watching the highlights um, just before the Coventry Luton game, and it looked for all the money. They only showed one of those clips. I was like, he's miles offside. <laughs> and then eventually they showed the other. Like, Hang on, he's on onside. Yeah, yeah, yeah give up but yeah you're, you're right it's and it, well, it just shows you what a difficult job it is doesn't it because you're standing yeah. down the line and yes he's offside in that he's past the last defender but is he more advanced than the ball really hard to tell does yeah. and does the ball even go forwards again depends on the angle yeah. you look at it from yeah it's an interesting one with Portsmouth isn't it because you know they started the season well got a lot of good draws and they eventually got their win a couple of weeks ago and I, I thought personally going into this game you know, Sheffield Wednesday, been very hit and miss. You know, I know a lot of people had higher expectations that they'd finish, you know, high-end mid-table, um, you know, if not comfortably survive. And I thought Portsmouth being back at home, you know, I'd have a good opportunity to win. But, you know, it's a, it a cracking goal to win it. And, you know, you've got to give them the credit where it's due. Um, you know, they capitalised on the momentum they got from the goal, whether you think it's offside or not, and then went on to win. So... It's a really funny one because, you know, Michael Smith 
used to play for Portsmouth, and he goes down as one of Portsmouth's all-time worst players. And then he spanks that in from like 30 yards. Of course he does. <laughs> it's always the way. You've always got, the way. You've got to worry a bit about Pompey, haven't you? Because out of the three teams that have come up, you'd say that Derby and Oxford are brilliant at home. Um, their home record will keep them easily in the league, whereas with Pompey, they're, they're not picking up the results at home. And that, no. that for me, is a really concerning thing. And uh, they're a team I'd like to stay up as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, they, they, they deserve to... <coughs> well, no one has a right to be at any level of football, but Pompey are massive. They yeah, are they massive. Are. Great away day. Yeah, Pompey fans getting worried, though. Tide is turning on socials about John Mussinio right now. Oh, it's early days for that. I mean, with a big step up. Football fans are fickle. They are fickle. I'd, I'd hang on if I were them. Yeah. Right. Moving on to Bristol City nil. Leeds nil. Great <laughs> to see Liam Manning return yep. into the dugout um, as a dad. And uh, all of us are dad. Well, Tyler, you're not a dad. You know, no. You're still young. Not yet. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yeah. it time. Yeah. It's amazing seeing the, the support that he got from that. It is absolutely awful. Like one of the worst things that could happen to anyone. Um, Leeds had the bulk of attacks, though. 17 shots in total, only five yeah, yeah, on target. Nil-nil battering, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. We were just saying this. <laughs> well, Bristol uh, City abs- did absolutely well. Absolutely spanked them, nil-nil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Bristol City did well. You know, Max O'Leary made four saves, and the defence did a top job. Nine interceptions, six blocks, 12 clearances. But Leeds being quite wasteful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I mean, if you can siege the goal that way and still not score, uh, at least you don't concede, I suppose. Um, not the result I would have picked before the game. No, no 100% not. not. I think if you're going to get something against Leeds, you're going to have to do that a fair bit of the game regardless, yeah. whoever you are. Um, if you look at Burnley, when Burnley played Leeds, there's only like 23% possession and somehow won that game. Still, I still don't know how that happened, but... Uh, you know, fair play to Bristol City. Mm. Yeah, I mean, going into it, I said a draw, but I said a high scoring draw um, for Bristol City. You know, they they started off a bit slow, didn't they? You know, especially away, they were, I know they were at home for this game, but obviously they took back to back 3 0 defeats, didn't they? And I actually have got high expectations for Bristol City. I actually said they'd uh, finish in the playoffs the last spot. I, I just. Ooh, f- no, that's delusional. I just, <laughs> I, I just thought they were on the rise season upon season, yeah. and you know, it's. I just think sometimes going to their ground is is, is difficult, and you know, you never know what you're going <coughs> to get with Leeds. As much as they've done well the last couple of mm-hmm. games, you never really know. And I thought going there, early kickoff, be a bit of a difficult game. Obviously, it turned out to be a draw, um, and yeah, you know, obviously that, you know, unfortunate. Um, incident would have obviously you know motivated the players and, and stuff and obviously you know it did to, to grind out that draw uh, with with the pressure on them so credit to them yeah mm-hmm. yeah and Leeds fans funnily enough <coughs> they're, they're not happy with Manor Solomon uh, most of them are hoping the loan gets terminated <laughs> in January but mm. people saying he looks unfit he looks overweight he's just come off from a massive yeah. injury layoff um, I think bide your time with that one. I'd, you'd be yeah. very stupid yeah, yeah, to be yeah. sending him Hell home. Hell of a player. Yeah. You know, you get him fit and he's he's a top player in this league. Yeah. But they're, they're worried about the state of their forward line with the exception of Matteo Joseph. They, they, they think they're pretty lightweight. Matteo Joseph is one hell of an exception. I, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. mind him as my exception. Oh, my we've got gosh. no no one but no him. One. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Okay. It's like Man City again. We're a bit worried apart from Haaland. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite good though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be fussed if I was a Leeds fan. You're going to be up there at the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people just love a whinge, don't they? Well, these days? Yeah. and it, you know, you've got to imagine what that grinding, endless bottling has been like for Leeds <laughs> fans. <laughs> you know, they, they've had it rough. Um, <laughs> Yeah. They're going to be up there. Wow, wow, wow. Right, on to Coventry 3, Luton oh. 2. Bottling. Just bottling, on the subject yeah. of bottling it. I, was, I wasn't going to have a Guinness today. I was just going to drink bottled beer <laughs> to, to make the point for what was one of the most abject second half surrenders I've seen since I watched Luton abjectly surrender in the second half to Bournemouth last <laughs> year. I mean, it was uh, dismal. Great first half. Luton... You know, against the run of play, took a two-goal lead, um, played really well, looked fantastic. And the second half, it was like a whole 11 new players had come out. What what on earth was happening? So poor, wasn't it? Um, 
good for Coventry. I think they were very good. On the flip side of that, even when they were 2-0 down, I think they were the better side um, on the balance of play. Sakamoto looked yeah. uh, a really, really dangerous player again. Hadji Wright, you know, is getting there. You know, we clearly um, needed something to go in for him, a bit like we've had with Elijah Adebayo. Um, and Ellis Sims is always a danger. And, and actually, to score against Luton from a set piece... You know, it's quite happen. impressive, yeah. And uh, fair play, it was a really well worked set piece from a Luton point of view. We should have done better, um, but you would have to say they they fully deserved it. Um, I would have said that they deserved to at least be level at half time. Yep. So yeah, yeah, it was. You know, two goals against the run play. One was a penalty. Um, Coventry could have had a couple of goals in that first half. So mm-hmm. overall, I think the result is fair. But from a Luton fan's point of view to give it up so easily I don't mind if you battle hard and you still lose but to just give it away it uh, didn't feel good no it really, really didn't. <laughs> yeah no absolutely I mean being at the game I thought you know looking back at it obviously the first half wasn't great but being there you think it is because you're two new up and you know we've you know been, we ain't been good enough throughout the season so you know I was happy for Elijah to get that goal you know obviously after the unfortunate you know abuse <coughs> he's been getting um and yeah, it was looking, you know, it was looking decent at two 0 But I don't know what what was said at half time. You know, even just sleeping pills. Put yeah, into <laughs> <the laughs> half time energy drinks. E- even in the even in the first half, they had some great chances where you think, well, how have they not scored? Yeah. You know, it's went wide, and you know they had a, a early chance in the second half as well uh, with Sims to to uh, have a great chance before he scored and. Yeah, they deserved it. You know, they were just using their relentless pressure on us and we just didn't really know what to do and we couldn't handle it and we got punished. And it was similar to the Oxford game in the sense of we go 2 new up, we go to all, we're, you know, fortunate not to lose that. And then we've uh, obviously ended up losing this game and we've got punished from doing that. So, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of... Things for me, um, you know, I thought up until his red card, he weren't too bad, Holmes. But then as soon as he's done that, he's just not really helped himself and the team and it's just gave them extra That's motivation. Very, very tired foul, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, extra motivation to go on and win. And it was just a lot of things. I think some of the subs weren't great, but I th- some of the players he, uh, that was starting the first half, you know, what were they doing in the second half? It was just, I know it's hard to keep up that relentless pressure, but they weren't even trying in the second half it was terrible and you know what we 12 games in Luton 10 11 points 44 isn't going to keep you up no no way no 50 ish keeps you up 44 is not going to do it so pretty stark problems for Luton there Coventry on the other hand are they stuck in the Ten Hag doom loop where you lose 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 win to save the job lose 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 win to save the job uh, and is this, you know, are they circling the drain with Mark Robbins? There seems to be a real split amongst Coventry fans of, yeah. we love Mark Robbins, give him time, and Robbins out. And if, if they play like they did yesterday, because fair play to Coventry, they're fantastic. They played were. some fantastic football. Then the, 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 the points will come, because they were so <coughs> good. They were good. They were so good that that is a false position, considering their squad and the way they play. But look, if, if you want to hear more about this game, tomorrow we're dropping the Luton Town show. You can listen to us wax lyrical about Coventry and how good a job Mark Robbins did in that game yesterday. But let's talk about Watford won, Blackburn nil. And uh, I, I think it was a very even game. Watford being really good at home, Blackburn not travelling well, but Blackburn had a proper go. Um, oh, I f- hey, they waste, wasted some very decent chances yeah. actually. Um, was, that yeah. that mad one that ricocheted off the yeah. bar and almost went in, that was you know an inch away from being a goal. So close, wasn't mm. it? I thought that was in. I really <laughs> did. I looked at it. it was uh, yeah, like you said, about an inch from going in. And considering Blackburn don't travel as well, I thought they really gave it a good go, mm. and they're going to be gutted about that for just a, a bit of a bizarre arm positioning handball um, as Luton fans contentious contentious well, wasn't contentious it was a penalty yeah, yeah. You, the silhouettes are on um, IFAB as to what in yeah. what is a unnatural un- making the body unnaturally big which is the rule and that obviously was that's a penalty I 
don't know why. It's like, is he appealing to something? Why is his arm up there in the first place? Exactly. He's up like he's drowning. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he did, he did rather look like he was um, at the end of Titanic yeah. slipping under the waves, <laughs> exactly, didn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a penalty. Uh, no contention at all. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a look at Fop Mob, and funnily enough, uh, what tickled my... Uh, funny bone was the fact that Daniel Buckman was down as the start man for this game considering the amount of abuse he's been getting from Watford fans constantly I mean he did throw the ball in his own net twice against Leeds <laughs> <laughs> I mean that, that is probably fair to give him a bit of it after that and yeah. um, I mean you could probably blame the manager for playing him injured against Luton because he clearly was yeah, he couldn't um, kick the ball <laughs> couldn't kick the ball but yeah he, he pulled off some decent saves I'll say the one that he pulled off that went straight into the middle of the area that led to their chance as well but what else can you do, I suppose, from point blank range? Save is a save. Yeah. Yeah. What I was gonna say is, you know, overall, I, I don't actually think he's that bad. I remember the two nil game. Uh, you know, last time we played him, obviously, other than the three nil, and I thought he was decent in that game. You know, prevented it from being more because we were ruthless and very dominant in that game. Uh, similar to you know the three nil win, but. I don't know. I mean, I think the penalty is a penalty. You know, you look at it, you know, if your arm's out like that, it's always going to be given. And I mean, I have to give a lot of credit to Blackburn, but a lot of that's at home. You know, they've they've been really good at home. Obviously, they did have a 100% record up until they're drawing their last home game. So, you know, I thought the departure of Schmodix would, you know, make them fall down. And I, I did say they'd go down, but I think, you know, the way they're playing, they're more than capable um, the Japanese striker they got oh Hashi yeah he's, he's really good proper. he's really good and you know they have got good other other attackers around so you know fair play to them um, but you know I guess Watford's good home form continues sadly it does I mean sorry impartial impartial we're, we're, we're impartial here um, right on to Burnley nil QPR nil. I don't I don't know how this was a nil nil. Talking of a nil nil. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a Scott Parker masterclass. And funnily enough, I'll start with the the vibe on Reddit. Bournemouth and Fulham fans in the match threads, well in the post match thread, saying we told you so. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't what, know. So, uh, what so a nil-nil that was. So 22 shots, all but four of them coming in the box, managing just four shots on target. 623 right, passes nice. to QPR's 177. Peak <laughs> parkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And just unfortunate they, they couldn't put it in. <laughs> with, with the strike force they have as well. Yeah, yeah. It was and quite it, a game. It's, for Cody it's given... Sunderland yeah. a little bit of breathing space at the yeah. top of the league. Yeah, yeah. Because they desperately needed those two points they dropped yesterday. We, and they did drop them. Yeah. You know, that is two the points dropped for Burnley and yeah. a fantastic point for QPR who are really struggling. Yeah, you can't have it's any two draws in a row now, isn't it, for QPR as well yeah. from being behind against... The corner Cornwall. is being well, turned. You know, I think it's it, against those two sides as we've seen with Coventry, they're two really good points. Mm. Yeah. No, no, fair play. Right, on to Derby 1, hole 1. Hull came to attack. They wanted those three points. Uh, and Xavier Simons, he scored with an excellent strike from the outside of the box. Lovely play out from the back, to be honest, from Hull. But uh, I put in a pun here. Derby bit the Tigers back in just 10 minutes later. In just 10 minutes later? Wow, I can't even well, talk this you morning. You can't talk all right. Dar apparently. Yeah, Derby hit. You sure you Darby. didn't write a haiku? <laughs> 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 okay, I, I'll read it ex exactly. Well, I wrote this last night. Derby bit the Tigers back just 10 minutes later. I think that works. I yeah. I signed Xavier Simons in a FIFA game a year or two ago, and he was quality. Yeah. I, I've no, not really seen him live ever, but he's great in FIFA, so, you know. Fair play to that. Was anyone else confused and wondered why they managed to sign Javi Simmons, the Dutch international? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, get, I get them <laughs> I like, confused as well. Year, yeah. I was like, doing well with their recruitment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's <play>. Quality, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they have a Jao Pedro as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they found him from. Uh, ben Osborne and Dejuan Brown uh, combining to level. And Derby, they're doing really well. And this was actually Brown's first Senior appearance, I think he's the kid's 19. Fair play to him, massive. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Derby have been uh, one of the surprises for me. I thought they would struggle, I really did. They, the um, I didn't rate 
Paul Warren that highly uh, as a manager in this league because he's only ever known relegation. Mm. <laughs> he has. Um, fair enough, he has man managed Rotherham at that point as well. But and, and Derby lost a few key players as well, but I think they've done really, really well. And at home, they're really hard to break down. Teams just, just can't go there and get, get a win. Um, so absolutely fair play to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you guys ready to talk about the game that we're all waiting <laughs> to talk about? So Plymouth 3, Preston 3, and uh, it's great. So th the, the Plymouth fans actually have a term for what's going on at the moment. It's called the Rooney Moon. <laughs> is it called is that? that? Well, it's like a honeymoon, but oh, Rooney, okay. the, Ro the Rooney Moon. I just thought his face looked like a moon. <laughs> 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 so the Rooney Moon continues, and it looked like Preston's amazing form were continuing. I think we both back them. To, to win yeah. and I, I told Preston fans in the comments when we back you that's the kiss of death yeah, yeah. And, that, that's exa <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened yeah. so 3-0 yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is and it, in comes yeah. Morgan Whitaker to just shake the whole thing up um, I said, I I said earlier well. all I've written for this is Plymouth Preston hyphen mayhem <laughs> <laughs> It's absolutely nuts, isn't it? And and how they've kept hold of him, I uh, mean, is is an yeah. You'd have to say it's probably down but, to. But but is this Rooney. when you bring someone like Rooney yeah, in, you you, you think it. there's downsides? He doesn't appear to be very good at winning football matches, um, but you keep people like Morgan yeah. Whitaker around because there's some star appeal where. Well, especially in that position as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. because obviously, um, it, you know, as, as that that kind of forward, and he's just absolutely incredible isn't he he's just head and shoulders above so so many other players in this league but wow what an absolutely <laughs> nuts game well and well. in a week end of mostly <laughs> dreary <laughs> one nil 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 championship yeah. action a long compliment with Preston to just say yeah screw that lads <laughs> we're going for it chaos reigns no defending whatsoever. <laughs> defending so is not needed <laughs> Now the proper game, uh, and to be honest, Plymouth, they could have won it. Andre Gray, great inspired signing, former Luton Town play, yep. he comes on, he scored the second goal. He could have grabbed the fourth goal, but Woodman, fair play to Woodman, he made a absolutely fantastic save, and the Rooney Moon continues. Rooney Moon. It's terrible. I'm, I'm off to the Rooney Moon suite. <laughs> 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 just serving sausage rolls it's a, <laughs> it's a sh shipping container <laughs> packed full of Greg's sausage rolls <laughs> uh, okay should we talk about Sheffield United 2 Stoke nil? so Sheffield United back on the horse of a great defensive performance like a, a vintage defensive performance from them to go with their win uh, should they have scored more maybe Victor Hansen what a, what a goalkeeper he is he made four saves, ends the back-to-back -back losses for the Blades, and it means Stoke are now winless in four. Their last win being that 6-1 battering at Plymouth. Well, I think it's great that you did a video about how <laughs> Sheffield United were going to win the league, <laughs> and they promptly started losing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and luckily, yeah. that effect has worn off now, and they're, they're back yeah. to form. Um, um, Who I should mean, I jinx next? By the way, I, I don't think you were wrong in anything <laughs> yeah. you said in that video. It's just fantastic timing that they started bottling matches as soon as you said they were great. Please just do one where you say Luton are going to just lose every single Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luton relegated last with zero <laughs> points. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, I do seem to have the touch, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I felt it was a good game for Sheffield United to bounce back in because, again, Stoke, they're another one of these inconsistent sides. And, you know, being back at home, obviously their two that they lost were obviously away, wasn't they? So, for me, it was a good opportunity for them to bounce back. You know, we know they're very good at home. They get a lot of clean sheets and that's what they did. I mean, on my championship predictions, I actually did say 2-0. Um, oh, to, to Sheffield United, I, I, just knew, I just knew it'd be that type of game. Really, <coughs> you know, you just with Stokes' inconsistency and a good opportunity to bounce back, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, and to be, to rub salt in the wounds as well, Tyrese Campbell scored against his former club as well. Like you love to see it. I really rate him. I think he's a really good player. I know Stoke were a bit down over towards the end. I know, but uh, ev every time I've seen him play, he's got, s you know, he's got such a lot of power and pace about him. Such a good player. 
and yeah, two nil, the most predictable result probably. Not not suggesting that wasn't a good prediction, of course it was. But I think their defence is probably the best in the league, isn't it? Sheffield United, so good. So. Yeah, ridiculous, ridiculous defence. Like all props to Sheffield United. And to all the Sunderland fans tuning in, <laughs> now we're gonna be talking about Sunderland two, Oxford nil. Well, given what you did to Sheffield United, I don't think they want you to come out and say Sunderland <laughs> are gonna win the league. No, nah, so I actually did a video called <coughs> Are Sunderland going to run out of steam? And in there, I said, I can't see them winning the title. I can see them dropping down into the playoffs. Uh, they, they proved me wrong. Uh, look, speaking to a few Oxford fans and having watched uh, the extended highlights package, I can safely say Oxford were completely outclassed. I was Oxford a, yeah. are a good team. Mm. That and was a 6-0 in the making and ridiculous. very lucky that it didn't end up that Don't way. Don't know how it was not Oxford were properly under the cosh. 14 interceptions, two blocks, 12 clearances and uh, Jamie Cumming had to make four saves. Um, Oxford just could not play through Sunderland's midfield and that is why Luton had to bypass it. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I didn't agree with your post-match Luton-Sunderland video. I forgot to mention the Sunderland actually defended well because I was just blown away that we did back-to-back decent performances. Yeah, it w- yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. But I thought Sunderland were decent in that game and there is something about being able to weather a storm and then go up the other end and score that makes you a champion, right? Mm, nothing highlights mm. that more than yesterday's result for Coventry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, exactly. I'd, you know, Sunderland are the top of the league, deservedly so. And they've got a little bit of clearance now with Burnley slipping up. Uh, and with Leeds slipping up. So it's turning into that really interesting pre-Christmas stretch in the championship Mm -hmm. where the table starts to take shape. And I think, you know, Sunderland fans are probably going to be able to put two fingers up to you at the end of the year and uh, enjoy their promotion. I don't mind, as long as they watch the videos to (laughs) hear what I have to say about them. Um, No, but I will say that they look really good. Joe Bellingham, ridiculous footballer, ridiculous. Isidore. Took his goal fantastically well. He looks like he's getting into his stride. They're calling he? him Thierry Is he Isidore. Alone <laughs> with an option? Yeah, yeah, he's they got a four an million wow. pound option. That's oh, a great, great business. business. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be yeah. I, I'd, I'd do it now, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no reason not to. No, exactly. Yeah, tremendous business. Yeah, no, Sunderland just utilising their home form, I guess. Um, as for Oxford, you know, I thought they'd give it a good go like they have in every so game. Did they, I. they just didn't. I thought did they'd they? have a go. I thought they'd score at least a goal. I well, mean, they, they weren't allowed to have a go. Yeah, they weren't. They you were know, just completely outclassed bossed. everywhere yeah, in, on bossed. the pitch. On mm. And yeah. I think that's their first game, isn't it, where you've seen, you know, as much as they've got experience and they've done very well, I think that's the first game where you can see the level in from the League One to, to the Championship for them. So credit to Sunderland, they, they keep it going. It's just. Can they keep it going continuously? We we shall see. Do you think they can keep it going? I, I was the same as you. I thought they'd go down towards the playoffs um, as the season goes on. I just think, you know, they have got experience in the squad, Patrick Roberts and, and a few others. But I think overall, the squad's still, you know, can it get over the hurdle? You know, it's a similar situation to, oh, it's a bit different, but obviously, you know, Arteta as a manager, obviously, is quite inexperienced compared to the others at the time you know like Pep and that so can he do it I'm, I'm not too sure can Sunderland you know do, uh, continue to be up in the top two I'm not too sure because like Sheffield United they've got a solid defence like we say Burnley are a good side still you know they're still up there and obviously you've got Leeds as well so they're probably my top three it's just in what order um, but Sunderland continue this they could be could be a dark horse and I know loads of their records are you know, a lot of the stats I'm seeing and stuff of when the certain team last did this, they went up to the Premier League and stuff like that. So if they keep going, then we'll, you know, there's no reason why they can't. Yeah, no fair play. Sunderland fans, you can subscribe to him, <laughs> T-Boys TV. He'll, he'll be uh, bigging you up all season. <laughs> and we, we promise that Ollie will not release a video talking about how great you are and immediately curse you to two back-to-back losses. Uh, We we (laughs) promise. It is the price to pay, isn't it? (laughs) Two back-to-back losses seems to be the going rate. Um, Yeah, right. Let's talk about Swansea nil, Millwall one. And Swansea got properly FM'd here. Like, one-way traffic the entire game. 17 shots, five on target. 
27 clearances from Melbourne and Lucas Jensen making five saves. Yeah, man, proper, man of the match. Man of the match. And proper old school performance from Millwall and Casper Denoy nabbed the winner and added time. A bit of quality from Millwall. They nicked it at the death yep. here. And I knew you were yeah, coming to Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. And, and Ryman, so you, yep. you said Millwall were going down. Yep. A back-to-back yep. wins have Mil- taken Millwall from 20th yep. to 10th. 100%. Millwall are back. That is the Millwall that we know <laughs> and recognise, isn't it? Raw. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I didn't say that. But... Um, <laughs> I put Millwall down there because their defence hasn't been what we all predicted it would be at the start of the season. I think they've got some good players like uh, Tanganga, for example, but they have been letting in goals and not scoring enough, um, which has been the, the worry. But that was a classic Millwall performance. You know, defended really well, um, kept Swansea at bay and then nicked the winner. Absolutely. They, that is more the Millwall under Harris that we recognise. So, absolutely fair play. You play like that, they're going to be mid-table comfortably yep. by the end of the season. Yeah. No complaints then. No, can't yeah. disagree with that. I had high ex- uh, higher expectations for Millwall, like a lot of us, because, you know, if you can get a player in like Tanganga, obviously I know they had him yeah, alone, but signing. to get him in permanently, you know, they look quite solid. E- even he was scoring a couple of goals towards the end of last season for them, wasn't they? I know when they beat Birmingham 1-0, he scored the late on goal, didn't he? So, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one. You know, they've got Watmore as well. You know, he's, he's a good striker. So, maybe they can they can climb up. Um, but to go to Swansea, to be fair, Swansea have been bit good at home this year and, and, and grind out that result and get the 1-0 at the end was, was a brilliant three points. Yeah, Swansea, like we've been saying it over and over again, the fact that they haven't even scored over 10 goals yet this season. I think they're the only team not to hit double digits in the championship, but they are solid. They, they've they still conceded fewer than they've scored. It, it's mad, but I think that Swansea will be absolutely fine. You know, Millwall just completely Millwalled them at the end of the day. Yeah. Right, final game to talk about. West Brom nil, Cardiff nil, and West Brom's wobble extends to six games. Uh, is it a wobble? I think they're very solid. Uh, but, but they're very consistent. <laughs> you're, you're almost guaranteed a nil-nil draw these days. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> wobbly about that. Oh, they had a proper go in this game. Cardiff they showed the defensive side. They cannot put the ball in the net, though, no, can they? No, no, no but don't worry. Goals already, yeah, they? Yeah, but, well, we, you know, I've, I've got it here in the running order. They need, a sef- uh, they need a soft touch to get back to winning ways. I wonder who they have next. Yeah, oh dear. <laughs> oh. Luton Friday night, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's Friday. Um, I think to, have, to be fifth, Sixth, wherever they are at the minute, having scored only 13 goals in 12 games. And, and, not, and not won their last six and games. And not won their last six games yeah, is pretty cool. impressive work. Um, I think they had that great run just before and now now they've bottomed out. But they're getting points, points on the board every single week. And that's what it's all about at this stage of the season. Um, I think once they get back to scoring ways, they'll go back to winning ways. Yeah, yeah I think most West Brom fans would have, with all of the debacle off the scenes... Um, at the start of the season and the business plan that they've been put under and everything else um, would probably take where they are now yeah. um, even with the really good start that <coughs> they had um, and you know you've got when you've got Carlos Colbran you'll be okay <laughs> you'll be <laughs> okay yeah yeah you'll, and I, I still see them playoffs I really do Definitely. can you believe that some West Brom fans are calling for Carlos, Carlos Colbran's no. head no I can't no, that's I believe nonsense that. absolutely oh, so I saw nonsense. it I saw it on Reddit you d- well, Can you believe it? Yeah, but seeing something on Reddit doesn't make it so. It's They're like more sane than Twitter. I remember last <laughs> that year... That is also not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> so last year as a Luton fan, everyone was saying, oh, the Forest fans are so awful. Not even Forest fans are awful. I was like, uh, I've met a couple. They were nice. Mm. Well, yeah, but on Twitter, they d- Twitter and Reddit aren't the real world. Mm. They're a tiny microcosm of absolute morons all getting together and being idiots to each <laughs> other. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, I, I think if you're calling for Carlos Corbrand to go at this point, you you just you've lost the plot completely. I know it, obscene, obscene. He's without doubt the best manager in the championship, in my opinion. Oh yeah, yeah, mine. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Just quickly as well, I think uh, Cardiff. You know, fair play to them. I mean, they had an awful start to the season. Yeah, we well didn't even mention it. Cardiff. Spun, we're just it, spun it around now, though, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. And, now, and now they're now they're five unbeaten. Yeah. You know, they're they're doing remarkable, Incredible. really. And I know we've got them soon. So yeah, do you, yeah. We, we got them straight one. after West Brom. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Rele- relegation six pointer that one. <laughs> oh, Cardiff aren't going to be relegated. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but you're right. Omar has done a, a great yeah, job. Yeah, it's and tremendous. To keep it as tight as he has done at the back as well, with a team that were just leaking goals for fun and not looking a threat at all. Yeah, brilliant. Really, really brilliant. Yep. But who impressed you this week? Let us know in the comments. And also a big shout out to our host, the Bricklayers Arms in Luton, heart of Hightown. It's right next to the station. Wherever you live in the country, it's literally smack bang next to Luton Station. Come down. They've got a Halloween beer festival. We'll probably live stream from here. You can watch Beefy getting progressively more drunk as, as the, the day goes on. Yeah, it I'll, should be fun, right? I'll, I'll be doing live stream Thursday or Friday this week um, from the pub, and it won't be talking about football. It will just be watching me drink. <laughs> I'm expecting big numbers for that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll show the you know what the offerings are here at the Brickies. Uh, <coughs> also, a big thank you to our audio partners, Black Star Amplification, for the mics and the mixer, all the toys that we need to produce a top pod. And also a big thank you to the record shop in Amersham. Wherever you are in the country, head on down to Amersham, collect your vinyl from there. You mentioned the OK Football Show. There's a little sign that you can point to and you can tell them which of the people, which, which, which of the people uh, on the on the little diagram that's there. He's like, I like that one. He's my favourite. And just point to me. Uh, or, or you can point to Ryman. Uh, I don't know. You can point to any one of us and just say that you watch us. And then you'll get a discount on your vinyl, your CDs, your guitars. But as always, whoever you support, have a great week.